There's this line by Gary Vee that took a long time for it to really settle with me. But once it actually hit me, it produced this huge aha moment. Check it out. Uh, the only advice I'd like to give to everybody is to do you. To find what your North Star is. To understand yourself. To understand what your work-life balance ambitions are. How much, what your financial ambitions are. What your life challenges are. The problems that you want to try to solve and cure. As we all do as humans, trying to climb those different mountains in our lives. What makes you tick? That is all that matters. You know, for me, for a long time, being an introvert, I thought that there was something wrong with me. Like, how was I going to succeed if I didn't even like talking to people or even being around people? How was I going to be able to sell my ideas or sell myself in a world where apparently all the extroverts get rewarded? Well, in this video, I want to share a little bit about my results doing a personality test, as well as a really huge life lesson for anyone that thinks that, how am I going to succeed with this being the way I am? What's up guys, Alex Hine here, author of the book, Master the Day. Now, I wanna quickly give you a heads up because I've partnered with a really cool company called Blinkist. Now, Blinkist is the only app that takes the best insights, like the need to know information from thousands of nonfiction books, condenses them down to just 15 minutes so you can read them or listen to them, so you can get the key points to go ahead and improve your life. If you're into personal development and business, I would check out Think and Grow Rich, The One Thing, and Good to Great by Jim Collins. Now, right now, Blinkist has put together a special offer just for my audience. So if you want, you can go to Blinkist.com forward slash Alex, which will give you a free seven-day trial. Well, let's see what my personality test results are. I wonder if this is one of those tests that's going to tell me I'm supposed to be a stripper or something when I grow up. Eh, we'll see. The architect, the logician, commander, debater, campaigner, protagonist, mediator, advocate. This guy's a wizard. That's awesome. I want to be Gandalf. So I like how they picked like the most douchey dude for entrepreneur. He's like some white dude from Connecticut. Kind of looks like a blonder, richer version of me. You feel superior. Hell yeah. No, I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe a little. Organized, definitely. Definitely. Well, I'm gonna skip through this, guys, because I've actually already done this many times. And actually, the results of my personality test are Gandalf, the wizard, INFJ, the advocate, who apparently has fun with treants, archers trying to woo women, and then trying to sell people on his Ponzi scheme or snake oil. All right, so I'm apparently one of those unicorns that's an INFJ. Now, seeing as I've lived in this body my entire life with this personality, this is to me what being an INFJ is like. The first thing for me is that INFJs, I think, tend to make decisions through feeling more than logic. Sometimes that leads to an irrational kind of person, but sometimes that leads to a super intuitive type of person that just reads people crazy well. And I think INFJs tend to be more intuitive than other people certain other personalities because they are feelers first. What's also interesting is that for me, I often feel things I can't explain. And I guess you could just call that intuition, which every human has, but I think INFJs are even more tapped into that in the sense of how they can read people. And they know what their feeling is right, but they can't articulate it. So it makes them maybe seem less credible. Like how can I communicate a feeling which is not really real, right? But I think that's why INFJs end up in these counseling type roles because they read people, they see between the lines and we can kind of see what's not being said. The last thing is that INFJs tend to be more idealistic. So I care, I've always cared more about ideas, doing something cool with my life, leaving an impact on humanity. You know, when I was a kid, I always rebelled anytime I had a boring job. And I always rebelled against anyone that would tell me things like, this is just the way it is, Jimmy. Like, you just got to do this, and this is just being an adult. I was like, screw that. This is not a life I want. And so I think INFJs tend to be idealistic like that. Now, one thing I want to kind of leave you with here is to remember that your personality is always a superpower. So like Gary V said, it actually took me a while to understand what my strengths were. And by a while, I mean years. 
and then to figure out how they actually interplay with my business and my career life, my work life. But if you think some aspect of my personality is a superpower, you'll then be able to find the thing that really is your superpower. You know, like when you ask yourself, where am I awesome? As an INFJ, I tend to be really good at reading people, especially when they're not saying something, I'm feeling what they're feeling, even when they're not speaking. I like see right through them. And so I don't think it's a surprise that I ended up in the field of Chinese medicine or that I ended up being a YouTuber into personal development, helping people improve themselves. That's the idealism mixed with helping people, with counseling. And I think that that's, well, for me, a superpower, the reason why I'm going into medicine and a field of medicine where I can actually see patients for a long time and actually talk to really understand the root cause. I think that really relates to my personality. Now, it'll also help you understand where you're not so good or where you're not fulfilled. Like, I'm not fulfilled working on a spreadsheet. I'm not fulfilled in a role where I don't get to see the impact of my work. I don't get to help counsel people on how to improve themselves or look deeper in themselves. So like math stuff, engineering stuff, that's not fulfilling to me. So when you think, what are the things you don't like doing, that'll help you understand maybe either you're weak there or you just shouldn't be doing them. Most important to me is actually trying to figure out how your superpower fits into your work life more than anything. Because where so many of us modern humans are unfulfilled is in our work lives. Because we feel like our intuition of what we really want to do is not lined up with our logic and intellect, what we tell ourselves we need to do, or we've been told. And so where does that fall in for you? You know, for me, if you go right through the wiki page, it says INFJs often feel most at home in roles like being a counselor, clergy, therapist, writer, missionary, psychiatrist, psychologist. All of these are dealing with, in my mind, the soul, with getting down to the meat of things, the real grit of life. And so when you understand who you are, based on your strengths, your weaknesses, your inclinations, then you can find a career that's really deeply fulfilling. So I'm an INFJ. Who would have thunk? Now, of course, if you want to know more about yourself, check out like the exercises I've included in my book, Master the Day. That first link in the description, that journaling exercise and worksheet, is going to bring you to an e-course that you'll get dripped emails on my process of journaling and how I used it to figure out myself reinvent myself and so on. So check out the first link in the description. That'll provide some insight for you there. And you can check out my last videos right there and right there.